Welcome back to the Cabral House Call. I'm Steve Cabral, board certified naturopathic doctor. And today on our Mindset and Motivation Monday, we are about to tackle your questions based on how do you improve your life? How do you grow your life from a wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging perspective? We just tackled a really interesting topic about how to get people to take you more seriously. And that includes your own family when it comes to trying to convince them to do healthier things in their own life. So if you didn't get to tune into that, I do highly recommend you check that out. So let's get into our questions today. Some really great ones. So I'm looking forward to this. Our first question is from Patty. Patty asks, I'm just burnt out and I'm losing my interest in life. How do I turn that around? So totally understand that and empathize with that. And there, I think the thing is to understand that it's not unique to you. Even the people who lead the absolute best lives, the healthiest lives, they still go through ebbs and flows and they go through periods. Now, given it may be just, maybe it's just a couple hours or maybe it's just a few days and that's their low. Maybe your low has been a couple weeks or a couple months. But what I see is this, is that everyone experiences it. It's just some people's turnaround time is a lot longer than others. And so what I want to talk to you about today, Patty, is just it's important to keep things in perspective. So yes, your life isn't going as well as you want right now, but things are finite. This will be a specific period in your time. Maybe you're going through hardships right now. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's family-based. Uh, maybe it's your job. Maybe it's just career in general or family or you know sickness, whatever it might be. All of those things typically have a finite period. And what I would say is don't even wait for that period to run its course, as difficult as it might be, but start to look at what you can control. Because what you can control is a lot of times more powerful and more empowering than what you feel like you're lacking, you know, what you don't have control of. And that's what we focus on. That's where the lack of interest comes a lot of time is that we've lost control. We don't get to do a lot of the things that brings us great pleasure. So what could bring us that pleasure back? And what I would say is this, first, just start to find something that you enjoy in life, right? Sometimes you could say it's a passion. Like, what are you passionate about? Do you have a hobby that you like? Anything that you enjoy doing for you? Maybe it's reading. And if it's reading, Can you squeeze that in during a lunch break? Can you get a half hour to yourself for reading? You know, if that's something that you really enjoy. If it's exercise, build that into your day. Wake up a little bit earlier. That's your time before the rest of the world wakes up. That can be your time. Or let's say it has something to do with your health. Maybe your health has really got you down. Well, why don't you start reading online different forums or different places where people have gotten results and they've they've made their way back that they're a living success story. Or find a health coach or life coach or someone that really just is in there, they're doing it, and that can keep you accountable on a weekly basis. Not that you need the accountability for you know getting to a specific task, but helping you move forward in your own life. And again, these are typically really small steps. Find what you enjoy. Do a little bit of that every day. Again, a little bit of that every day, but make sure that it's a healthy you know, thing that you're choosing, that you're not using food as that substance that's maybe what's making you happy or, or giving you that pleasure. So I, I do hope that you'll write back to us, that you let us know how you did with this. But again, find out what you can control in life. Find out the things that do give you pleasure. And then in the grand scheme of things, keep things in perspective. Things are finite and we all typically do have a lot of good in our life, whether it's friends, it's family, it's our job, whether it's being able to put food on the table when other people don't have it, all of those things. Focus on what you do have. And of course, you can also wish for those things that you still do want in the future. All right. Second question is from Wanda. Wanda asks... If I turn to exercise as a stress reducer when I'm down, does that mean it could become an addiction? Okay, interesting question. And so basically looking at it as like down or, or maybe depressed. So, so you use an exercise to pull yourself out of that. Well, so this is a, it's an interesting question to answer because it can be looked at from a few different ways. People can exercise and they can exercise too much. So essentially, like, let's say you're exercising for an hour and a half to two hours to reduce stress, and you're doing that on a daily basis. Yes, that could be absolutely moving towards the line of an exercise-based addiction. So we don't want that. I mean, no more than an hour a day. That's really unnecessary. Of course, you could go for more walks. You could do things like that. No problem at all. Or a 90-minute yoga class. A lot of people do enjoy that as well. So what I would say is this, though. Exercise should be used when stressed because it very, so a lot of people, I'll just tell you from genetics, I do a lot of genetic testing, is that a lot of people do not adequately produce norepinephrine or adrenaline. 
And so when they exercise, they actually get that little boost. It gives them a little bit of cortisol boost as well. It wakes them up. It helps their neurons fire better. Their brain starts to think better. They get more oxygen pumping through their body. And that just overcomes some of those genetically predisposed issues with producing less norepinephrine. And again, it could also be because the body's burnt out. It's not producing that either. It's not just genetics as well. Our lifestyle, of course, has a lot to do with that. The other thing is, by exercising, you're going to also increase things like serotonin and dopamine and GABA, a lot of the neurotransmitters that our body needs so that it doesn't feel depressed. And you'll look at a lot of research and a lot of studies, and you'll see that exercise beats a prescription antidepressant so much of the time. I mean, it really does. So please do use exercise as a stress reducer. Please use it when you are feeling depressed, and ideally, you'll do a little bit on a daily basis or at least every other day basis. You just don't want to overdo it. So great question, and I hope that helps everyone out there. Last question is from someone who wrote in that called themselves Health Guy. So Health Guy is asking, I'm looking to change careers and get into the health and fitness industry. Any tips? Okay, so lots of tips. Could do probably an hour show or maybe more on this. And I've given a lot of these talks as well. But what I would say is this, is whatever you're in now, like whether you're in, so a lot of people are in like investing or IT, and it's just like the total opposite would be they love working out, they love getting into that. So I want you to think to yourself, do I like to exercise as something for me Or do I love exercise so much that I want to share it with others? That's my big thing. That will answer your question of whether you want to even get into the industry or not. Because believe it or not, a lot of personal trainers, a lot of yoga instructors, group exercise, spin, whatever it might be, like a lot of times they're not even getting in their own workouts, even though they live in a gym, you know, like that's where they're working out of. But because they're working with clients the majority of the time, so it's sometimes hard for them to fit in their own workouts. And and so again, the health and fitness industry, in my opinion, if you're doing it correctly as a therapist or instructor or personal trainer, is you are doing it to serve others. You love this so much that you have to do it. You have to share it with others. And that's the whole reason I became a naturopathic doctor is like, I wasn't comfortable anymore not being a naturopathic doctor, like not being able to give this advice on the highest level. And so I I had to do it. Like it was something for me. Yes, it is the advice. And I love seeing the results. Of course, I love seeing people get better. But it was it was just a bigger part of myself that I needed to do so that I felt like I was fulfilling what I was supposed to be doing in life. So if in life, you feel like you're supposed to be a yoga instructor, a personal trainer, a athletic trainer, a group exercise instructor, or an acupuncturist, naturopathic doctor, chiropractor, absolutely. I I certainly do highly recommend getting into it. It's going to take at least a certification, or it might take advanced schooling, board exams, all of that. But if it's something that you're passionate about, then that passion is going to fuel you to continue to do it and keep going with it. The other thing I would say is sometimes you can just put it to the test, right? So you could start working at the front desk of a yoga studio or a gym or a personal training place and just start to get your foot in the door and see the lifestyle, see what goes on in these specific places and see if that's what you want for a 40-hour week or more career. Because again, like it's not typically set hours in the health and fitness industry. You're working at six in the morning or you might be working until eight o'clock at night or, or maybe all of it. You know, we don't do that with our team, but I know in most health clubs and certainly how I came up at 17 years old, 18 years old, I was there at six in the morning and I was there till nine o'clock at night, which burns out a lot of people. But you know, when you do it right, um, you can really design a great lifestyle for yourself while helping share what you're so passionate about with others. So I hopefully that answers your question, health guy, and please keep the questions coming. I do love answering all of your questions each and every day. I'll talk with you soon. Thanks again for tuning in. As a thank you for tuning in today, I wanted to share with you the number one system my private clients in Boston and now all over the United States are using to lose weight, decrease bloating, improve digestion, eliminate skin issues, and increase their energy all day long. It's called the Dr. Cabral Detox, and without going into all the details right now, simply go to drcabraldetox.com, and you can find out how my proven, simple seven-day system can help you lose weight and feel great. There's no hype, there's no marketing, and best of all, it's guaranteed or your money back. And as a thank you for being a listener of the Cabral Concepts, I'd like to offer you $10 off your next 7, 14, or 21-day Dr. Cabral Detox purchase in the month of March. Simply enter the savings code MARCH10, all in lowercase, one word, when checking out. 
Thank you again for tuning in, and I look forward to hearing your success story soon.